him as they pleased. Which means, you know, on our part, we didn't believe half the shit, so that's some old crazy shit. The white man did what he was, did to him as he pleased, because he's the devil, so you know what I'm saying, by keeping him out of the way. But they, like I said, they knew he came, because in 1950, they gave him a motorcade down Washington, D.C., a damn a congressional parade that they don't let you know about. That's also in the uh, theology of time. Now listen, look at this. They said that they did not recognize him. They said, but the sons of Adam are going to suffer at their hands. Now what do they mean by that? They mean that when the, they're saying that basically what I told you when he was on the podium in 1973 and he, and he was speaking and then all of a sudden he, he saw a vision and he said, oh God, it, it hurts me to see what they're going to do to you. That means he's looking in the future and he's seeing the concentration camps now. In this particular part in Matthew 17 verse 4 to 25, they say because of his coming and both us not recognizing him and both the, both the, the white boy doing with him as they please when they did the whole thing with the Malcolm thing. Based on that, they say that the sons of Adam are going to suffer at their hands. Their hands is talking about the doggone powers that be. So, first of all, we didn't really fuck up because it was already destined that we was going to not recognize him because they say that he comes at a time when light shines in the darkness and the darkness comprehends it not or they would reject knowledge. So right in Matthew, they're actually talking about that. In, they're actually talking about that particular part. Which the suffering at their hands is AIDS, Ebola, concentration camp, crack cocaine, and black insanity at an all-time high. And black self-hatred at an all-time high, where they give you our woman, give you their woman, excuse me, the white woman now. You see what I'm saying? And they're suffering at the hands. And that's very interesting that, that with this particular part in, 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 in Matthew, that they would deal with that particular part. Uh, that particular part. Now... Uh, 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 that particular part. Now, let's deal with some things. We're going to go right ahead so we can go get into this particular part here because I want to say a couple other things. Number one, like I said, to understand your story is you've got to get there, rent that movie, The Never Ending Story. And when you see, they put it out in children movies because they know the adults ain't going to never see it. And the little boy, what the little boy is going through, come to find out that he, the whole adventure that he was going through was in actuality him. It's just it's the person on the inside of him projecting out. And so the actual story is going on in his small universe which is in the brain which everything that is projecting out here is going on is predetermined inside of you and you go through it every day that's what your dreams are you see what i'm saying also get the movie clash of the titans go back and see it comes on tbs all the time clash of the titans the guy perseus which is a, is a modified word of perseverant which is a later word, Parzabon, who is the one who gets the Holy Grail. Get the movie Excalibur and put yourself in the adventure. So you are Perseus. And they show the gods. They show two realms going on. The gods are putting little toys and say, we're going to do this to Perseus. We're going to put this in his way. We're going to put this in his way. And then they had the mortal realm, which is the earth. And they, this shit ain't nothing but a big ritual we're going through. And that's the way the shit is. The stuff is more of a ritual that you're going to and more of a of a damn computer game, more of a computer game or a role-playing game, more than it is reality. Because you can't make heads or tail out of reality, as long as you're looking with these two ways out. You see what I'm saying? So get the movie Clash of the Titans. Key movie, Clash of the Titans, or uh, Excalibur, key movie. Never ending story, key movie. Um, um, key movie. These are movies that you need to get and try to understand your role as you go on the Clash of the Titans. Clash of the Titans is surely, they just show you bit for bit on what's going on in you. But you just got to put yourself in the role of the Christ. You see what I'm saying? In the role of the actual Christ. And that's the key to the movie and all. Now, the white boy, what he's doing is he give you careers and he awards you. And as long as he's giving you awards, he traps you. It's just like the, the motor bus drivers. You, you, they, what they do is like the motor bus drivers. You can be running and the woman can see you on the bus and step on the damn gas. Because you know what I'm saying? So now she's gone, or he, but mainly they do it with a lot of... The reason why I say he, she, because they got this thing, they got this thing where they condition the sisters. That's why they always pick most of the sisters that drive the buses are over 40 in their 50s. You see a few young sisters, but not that many. And they can condition them, and they got, and a lot of the brothers are older brothers also too. You see what I'm saying? But it, the brothers is a different type energy that's going on. So they, and so this is not 
talking negative to the sisters, but they can, they can manipulate the sisters a lot. So what they do is, they come in and they give them a safe driver patch. Once they give them that safe driver patch, it locks them in forever. It's like a robot. That's like giving them a war. And they won't do anything outside of the rules. So they become non-humane. They see a motherfucker running through the bus in the damn lane. But, you know, they got a damn spot to pick up. They just keep on going because I'm following the goddamn rules. He wasn't there. I got to leave. So when they award you, and that's the same thing happened in careers. When they award you with your career, they do this. And why is this? Because they understand, basically, because they study us every day. They understand because you have no culture. None whatsoever. And because you have no culture, therefore your career becomes your culture. Same thing with damn fraternities. That's why, fratern that's why black people took fraternities and sororities far beyond what white people did. Motherfucking cues and shit. Nigga come in there, you know, he's he, he just a regular little freshman. He pledged and all of a sudden he, he actually personifies a damn cue and start acting a certain way or, or a cap or these particular things. Like I said, the other day we saw this sister, she probably been out of college 10 years, but she got a goddamn green car with AKA on. And she actually thinks that actually she's an AKA, like that is a part of her persona. You see what I'm saying? White people, you never really hardly see them after they get out of college, though. You never really hardly see them with stuff on them. Same thing with white masons. You don't see them wearing all that shit. Why is that? Because we, because we don't have a culture, we become our career. You see what I'm saying? We become our career. So they put that safe driver patch on there, or they put a gold medal around you on there, or they give you the MTV awards. They always give you an award ceremony, and that locks you in, and that kills your spirit even more. That's why you can't never get our people to do nothing once they go into a profession, because the profession becomes them, and that means they are no longer black, basically. All of them, they might say, like, African-American, all that old shit. That's the terminology. You see what I'm saying? So they are no, and so that's when the white boy come and say, I don't see you as a black person, Michael Jordan. I don't see you as a black person, Oprah, because she has identified with that particular job. And now, when we understand how is it that year after year shit can go on and we still catch hell is because Majority of our people, they have put these careers up in there since 19, it started around 1970. Remember that 1960s, you was fighting for shit, you ain't have but two people, teachers and preachers. You see what I'm saying? That was it. You can only, you know, the teachers call you can only teach or preach. You see what I'm saying? Then they started giving you more things, you know what I'm saying? On one level, they started giving you, on the blue collar level, they started letting you into, uh, you know, uh, fire department, post office, police department, these type of things. On the other one, on the white collar, they start letting them in the IBM and all this type of stuff. So what it did is, is actually took, they're actually, it's like a body snatcher. They're snatching members of the race. And once they go into that thing, you see what I'm saying? And once they go into that, to that particular part, they, they become non-black. And somehow the spirit, because the beast, the beast, he fire a few of them. You know what I'm saying? They fall on hard times and shit, and they come back to reality. You see what I'm saying? So this is what's going on, and so this is why our people, we're, they're still locked in this based on these career type things. Now, the new thing is, the stuff that I have just said, okay, on the college campuses, I'm supposed to speak there two weeks from now, uh, on the 9th. It was interesting because I was supposed to speak two weeks, the last two weeks I was supposed to speak, but for some reason they, they shipped the guy on the room and we couldn't get the room. But it's interesting, we were going to go to the lecture that was canceled, and when, when I turned around and we got on Lee Street going to Mo House, we felt this negative energy. I'm like, damn, what the hell is going on? I, I feel a negative energy. And, and my sister, she felt it too. So I, she said, I feel it too. But I remember when she first got turned on the mouths and they opened up psychically, they drove up and they said, you better get out of here. The Spirit told you, you better get out of here. The energy is very negative. Now, why is this? Because for some reason, when they go to college, and I know this because I've been in college for 10 years, for some reason, they tell you that these are the next black leaders. So the ego is inflated. And so now what you have is up on the campuses. Now everybody's into the revolutionary thing. So now they had last week, I think I had a brother that came and he did the revolutionary election saying, you need to fuck everything that's spiritual. You understand what I'm saying? It's about revolutionary. Now, first of all, about the revolution, that's a damn pipe dream for the simple fact that that's a romanticism because a real revolutionary, if he was really in revolution, first of all, revolution, uh, what they show you on TV, is different than the way the white people do things for the simple fact 
If you're a real revolutionary, you would know you would know about the things that I talk about, the concentration camps. You would know about these things now and not ten years later, still saying, I'm waiting for the white man to jump. So we we getting shotguns, we're getting rifles, we getting all this shit to wait for the white man to jump. And you don't understand the white man is covert. He starts his war on you ten years before and wipe out your whole clan. You see what I'm saying? And so you still